So welcome to my YouTube channel. Now that's what we call the good life. It's May and it's a really good time to be sowing seeds straight into your allotment. I often wait until about this time because they germinate so, so incredibly quickly. If you do them too early, they don't germinate. And if you do them too late, well, they might not come along quick enough. But this is for me the perfect time for me to get some seeds out. And the things I'm gonna be getting out today are some carrots. I've got some Harlequin ones and some normal, just some normal Nantes just normal orange ones. I've got various salad leaves I'm going to be putting out. I really like the um, curly leaf variety so I've got some green ones and some red ones to go out. I'm also going to be putting out some parsnip and also some beetroot and again I quite like the coloured ones. I've got some multicoloured ones there and I've just got some regular ones from Detroit just there. Now I have a specific way of sowing my seeds that I find really really effective which I'm going to share with you today so hopefully you'll get some really successful germination from your direct sow seeds. Now first of all I've dug the area over a couple of times over the last week or so. Also today removed I've got quite a lot of flint stones there so I've taken quite a lot of those out and because obviously I've got root vegetables in there and I don't want it to distort the roots. Don't worry too much, there's going to be a few, you'll never get them all out. But if you see a few, and today, I don't know why, it seemed like someone had chucked a bucket of flint on my allotment while I was doing it. So I've dug it over. I've also raked it over, so it's more of a fine tilth. Again, some people are really, really perfect when they do this. I just do the best I can. As long as it's not too lumpy bumpy, then obviously they'll be just fine. So I've also marked my rows out what I'm going to do. And with my carrots, I intend to put some Enviromesh on them. So I'm going to keep two small rows of carrots there. So when um, they germinate, I can get some Enviromesh over those to stop the carrot fly from affecting them. So I've marked out my rows. I've got like a plank there just to give myself a straight line. But you can use a string between two sticks. And I've got a trail here just to do a channel to put the seeds in. So it's really, really simple. It's not difficult at all. So this is one of the really fun jobs. So just a trowel or you could use a dibber, whatever you want to do. The seeds don't go down very deep at all. So you're not digging them right down deep. You now seeds as a general rule of thumb only really need to be roughly the depth of the actual seed themselves. So you're not burying them down really deep. That trowel is just a really, really easy way of doing a straight line. So once you've done that, we've had a lot of rain here. So I'm not going to water the soil, but if it was really dry, I would probably water it a little bit so the seeds get off to a good start in some moisture. But because we've had quite a lot of rain, I'm not that bothered, so I'm just going to drop the seeds in. So these are the multicoloured ones. Oh, I've just lost one over there. Grab that, so that it goes in the right place. So then just gently, sprinkle them in the row like so try not to put them too close together but don't be don't worry too much I think I've said before I generally don't thin mine out I just pick out the bigger ones first and um, use those and let the, let the smaller ones get bigger because I kind of think it's a waste of a vegetable anyway thinning them out too much in my opinion I'd rather just eat them all all the different sizes and shapes. There we go. So I'm going to do one row of multicoloured ones, and as I've only got a few left, I might as well sprinkle the rest in there. Like so. There we go. Now, something that I do, and obviously don't forget to mark the row, something that I often forget to do. The empty packet is quite often very useful. Once they start growing, you often know what they are anyway, but it's just beforehand, you can't remember what you've sown. Now something I do, because um, I've got quite clay soil if I'm honest, um, and I always found the soil really cracked off when I put the seeds in, I was really worried that they weren't going to germinate very well, I just get a little bit of multi-purpose compost and I just cover the seeds with that instead. So it all depends on what your soil's like. The other good thing of doing that is a different colour and I can see where I've sown as well, which is quite useful. If at some point I'm trying to water it and I've not put mistakes in, I can't exactly remember what I've done and when I've done it, in a small amount and as you can see on your small layer of compost you're not putting loads on just a very small amount like so there we go this is 
is just a you know everyday multi-purpose peat free we'll all be peat free soon so we might as well get used to it now might we and it's better for the environment as well so there we go all gently covered up so the seeds are all in and there's just a few more things that I'm going to go through of what I do when I'm sowing seeds direct into the ground. But before I do that, just to let you know, um, I've been approached by a raised bed company and they're actually going to let me um, have some raised beds on my allotment to review. And also for one of my lucky subscribers, you're going to be able to win on one of those raised beds. It'll be in one of my um, videos that will be coming very, very shortly. But if you've not already subscribed, it would be a really good idea if you did, so you don't miss out on that wonderful competition to win a free raised bed. Now, back to the seeds. So, they're all in the ground. Like I said, I've put some carrots in, I've put some beetroot in, I've put some lettuce, and I've put some parsnip in. When you've obviously put the compost down, just gently pat it down. You know, not too hard, but just gently pat it down. The other thing that you need to do is you need to water them in. Now obviously don't water them in with um, like that without a rose on it because the seeds will just splay everywhere. I'm not even prepared to demonstrate what it will do to my seeds but it will just push all the soil everywhere. Um, put a rose on so that it, so it waters evenly like so really is worth it so if you've not got a watering can with a rose or if you use a hose that's obviously got an attachment on it use this sprinkling attachment because it's much much better um, to water your seeds in with so the other thing that i will do in a day or two i'm not going to do it today because i've done enough and there's no real urgency but i will put some hoops down um or use these actually i could use the canes and i'll put some netting over because one of the biggest predators so your seeds, as they start to sprout, are the birds and they will nip them out and thin them more than you want them to. Um, once they've grown quite a bit, the seedlings, they're fine and you don't need cover over it. But initially, I will cover all these seeds with some netting just to protect them and I'll get that on in the next day or two. I will, however, leave covered with some EnviroMesh the carrots to stop the carrot white fly. I've been using EnviroMesh now for I don't know how many years um, and it really does help with the carrot um, with the carrot fly and um, I will put a link in the description if you've not got any but it is, it is really worth the investment because I've never thrown a piece out yet because it's so incredibly durable. Now I do really hope you've enjoyed watching this video today. If you could please give us a like and you haven't, if you haven't already please subscribe. If you've got any questions or queries then please as ever do put them in the comments and we will answer them.